Sweet. All right, we are on page four of ellipses, and now we're actually going to learn how to write the equations of ellipse. We've, we've looked at the overall equation, what they look at. We can pull out the uh, semi-major axis, the mi semi-minor axis. We can pull out the center. We can find the vertices. Now we're going to take some foci and know about a major axis length, and we are going to be able to find the equation of an ellipse. One of the most important things for us to find is a center. And if you remember, if you just wanted to kind of take a quick little graph of this, 3, negative 2, and 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, uh, 3, negative 2 would be down like here, right? And 3, 2 would be like up here. Mm -hmm. So what can you tell? You can tell that it's, since my foci are vertical from one another, you're going to have a vertical major axis, mm -hmm. right? Now, so the x stays the same. The x stays the same, exactly. You can also know that halfway in between where my foci are located is what? The, the center. center. So what are we going to use? We're going to use midpoint here. Okay. okay, we're going to use our midpoint formula in order to find our center. So what we'll do is 3 plus 3 over 2, and then um, negative 2 plus 2 over 2. So we get 6 over 2 and 0 over 2, so we get 3 comma 0. That's going to be the center. Okay, now that is extremely important whenever you're writing the uh, equation of an ellipse. Okay, so let's see what we really know here. We know that my center is right here, right? This is three zero, and we're just gonna kind of put there. Now, what is this distance right here in between here and here? Two. Negative it's, two. Okay, the distance is actually two, and yeah. I did go down two, so you could say negative two. I was looking for the letter, but that's okay. The distance oh, between the sorry. focus and the center is C. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so C is equal to that. So we know C is equal to two. Because we know where our focus is, we know where our center is, we can find the distance between the two. It also gave us this major axis length equal to what? Eight. Eight. Major axis length, okay, that's going to be the same thing as 2A, all right? Because, you know, you have that whole thing, right? A is just from one vertex to the center, and so from one vertex to the other vertex is 2A. That's your major axis length, so let's solve for A, and we get A equals 4. All right, now we have an equation that uh, we're going to use. It, because we have A and B, we're, we have A and C, we're going to find B. If you go back to the front, um, remember that equation that looked like C equals the square root of A squared minus B squared business? We are going to use that in order to find what we're missing. Okay? Okay. We have C, so we'll plug that in. And we have our A, so we will plug that in, and we will end up solving for the B squared. So, how would I do it from here? Um, how would you get rid of that square root sign? Square well, both sides? Square yeah. both sides. So, I'm going to end up with 4 equals 16 minus b squared. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. I'll take 16 from both sides. It's not pretty, but it works. Negative 12 equals negative b squared. Divide both sides by negative 1. b squared equals 12. Now, in the formula, I actually use uh, b squared, so I don't need to find the square root of b squared. Just okay. leaving it as b squared is fine. All right. So I'm going to erase kind of a little bit of what we have here, and mm -hmm. then I'm going to go from, actually, I think I can put it over here. Brandon, I just kind of moved our thing. I hope I didn't oh. mess it up. x minus h quantity square all over something plus y minus k quantity square all over something equals 1. Now, is my a square, which one's it going to go under? It's going to go under the Y. It's going to go under the Y because that was my longer one, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what was A? A was 4, four. so what's A squared? 16. 16. Um, what was B? We don't know B. We know B squared was 12, so 12 goes under here. Now, all I have to do is plug in my center. So, it's going to be X. What was my center? 3 mm -hmm. minus 3 quantity squared all over 12 plus Y I can just write y squared, right, because it was 0. Mm -hmm. y squared over 16 equals 1. And there you go. Cool, huh? Mm -hmm. Sweet. All right, let's pause that. And I'm on. All right, let's see if I can get it right. It wants us to find the eccentricity of this particular ellipse. What do we know? It's going to be between 0 and 1 somewhere mm -hmm. or another, right? Mm -hmm. But basically what we have to do is we have to be able to find C and A if we're going to do it. This is basically just the general form of a quadratic equation. 
All right, what we're going to do is we are going to turn it in to where it looks like an ellipse. Okay, so we what we're going Bible to do. Size by 64, so that equals yes, one. you want it to get to equal one. Okay, oh. so that's the big clue. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, but the way I'm going to do both sides is I'm going to put every single thing over 64. That's the same thing as dividing both sides by 64. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now how many times will 4 go into 64? 3. No, maybe 16. 16. 4 cubed is 64. Yeah. 4 times 4 times 4. That's what I thought you were talking uh, no, about. Not quite the same thing. Huh? Well, Do I get a gold star? You No, but no. you'll get a silver one. Okay, okay, so x squared over 16 plus uh, 16 goes into 64 four times. So we'll put that over 4 and then we'll put it as a 1. Are you kind of seeing where we simplified here? Mm -hmm. If I wanted to rewrite 64 as 4 times 16, the 4s would cancel. I'd be left with the over 16 part here. Is that good so far? Yes. All right. Now, which one is my A and which one is my B? 16 is your A. Because yes. it's bigger. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're going to say A squared equals 16. So what's A equal? A equals 4. A equals 4. B squared equals 4. So B equals 2. 2. Now I know A and B. Can I find C? Yep. Yes. Yes. I'm going to use the C equals the square root of A squared minus B squared. Now, guys, this is something you're just going to have to memorize. Okay. okay? Um, sorry, but that's just the way it is on that one. So this is going to be, uh, oh, well, I already had a squared, b squared, so I guess I didn't have to find it quite that way, did I? Are you getting c to be the square root of 12? Yep. Okay, that works for me. Yes. So I didn't really have to find a and b, but I, I just do it by, I just do. Yeah. That's what I do. Because mm. I usually use a and b. Yeah. So I went ahead and found it, but it's okay. So now we know that our eccentricity is equal to c over a. And so in this case, it would be the square root of 12 over what? 4? Well, square root of 12 simplifies, right, to square root of 4, square root of 3 over 4. So 2 square roots of 3 over 4, which comes out to be? Square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2. So that is my eccentricity. And if you plugged that puppy in your calculator, you would see that it's somewhere between 0 and 1. Okay. okay. All right, we're going to kill it.